Hello, good morning, our dearest gentle viewers. You're welcome to Focus on Parliament here on the Civic Space TV. I'm your host, Harris, Harris Akampurira. On Wednesday, the President of Uganda uh, presented Parliament the 28th State of the Nation Address. This was in fulfillment of the Article 101 of the Constitution, which provides that the President shall, at the beginning of every session, deliver to Parliament the State of the Nation Address. Political scientists and constitutional theorists have argued that the purpose of this provision is for the President to provide accountability and mobilize the national spirit for the next year of progress. We ask questions. Have Ugandans been inspired? Has the president fully accounted for the last financial year? These and many other questions is our focus of this edition of Focus on Parliament. And to answer these questions, I have a competent panel. Lady and gentlemen, you're very welcome. Thank I'll you. start from my extreme left. Uh, Mr. Yam Urobuto, a lawyer by profession, two-time guild speaker at Makere University, MLS president, former executive director at UONET, that is Uganda Youth Network, and now an associate director of Progressive Think Tank. Mr. Yam, you're most welcome to the show. Thank you, Harris. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, a good morning to our viewers. Thank you very much. Next is uh, Mr. Ari, uh, Cromwell, I beg your pardon, Cromwell Okello, who is uh, a Rotary Peace Fellow at Makere University and an ambassador at IUP. You're most welcome, sir. Thank you, Ambassador at IEP, Institute I... for Economic and Peace. All right. And so... a Rotary Peace Fellow at Makere University. Okay, okay. Tell me more about that later on. And last but by no means the least uh, is the Honorable Minister Mukisa Vanessa at Makere University. You're most welcome, lady, to the show. Thank you so much. A good morning to you all. I'm Masika Vanessa, the Health Minister of Makere University. Thank you very much. Yam, let us begin with you. You're the man who has been in the things. Tell us, what were your reflections of the president? Did he inspire you? What were the highs and what were the lows? Uh, thank you, Harris. Firstly, I must say that when you were introducing me, I almost thought you were introducing somebody else. <laughs> 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 there is a time, I think, I was watching uh, Dr. Chiza Vesje and the moderator yes. was introducing him as former everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so Vesje said, but I'm the current coordinator of the red card, um, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it speaks your strong reputation yeah, 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 and so, record in leadership. Yeah, so thank and you, yes. Abbott. Uh, I must uh, begin by uh, sharing my condolences to the family of the Honorable uh, Kato Obama. Uh, may he so rest in peace, uh, who did his contribution to the uh, progressive agenda of our country, I believe, in, in a number of fields, especially mm -hmm. within the theatre and comedy uh, entertainment industry. Um, I thought that... Uh, Unlike usually, uh, the president, I think, maybe due to a lot of noise that has, has been building over the last two weeks about the State of the National Address, mm -hmm. tried to come within the, the boundaries of what the ideal mm -hmm. State of the National Address should be, and that is addressing mm -hmm. uh, the last financial year and trying to give an impression of what the next financial year mm. uh, could look like. So we were treated a little historical <laughs> perceptions like usually does. Mm -hmm. And he, there was an attempt for him to give a bit of statistical data in comparison of last year, financial year, and the other year, mm -hmm. uh, which I believe is an improvement. Okay. But uh, still, in my opinion, it was shy of a number of, of issues that I think as the head of state he could have mm -hmm. had his voice and opinion on. Okay. So generally, an improvement, but still way below what it should be, in my opinion. 
Okay, mm -hmm. but are there specific uh, highlights that inspired you in your capacity as a Ugandan from the message of the president? Yeah, the the, the as a Ugandan, yes, but the, the question <clears throat> is what percentage of uh, Ugandans relate with uh, that kind of address that the president gave yesterday? Mm. There were a lot of statistics, yes, more as if he was speaking to an audience of uh, technocrats or diplomats and giving all the statistical data on how mm. our economy is, 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 is going. Mm. Uh, I thought that uh, even when the statistics could be right, but to the majority of the Ugandans, does that statistic reflect in the, in the nature of their livelihood, in the progress of their well-being? So uh, there was an audience that he addressed, mm -hmm. which is a smaller audience, mm -hmm. perhaps me and you who can understand what those figures mean. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the broader, general, ordinary Ugandan audience, mm -hmm. I think they could not relate with, with what the president was saying. Okay. So on my part, yes, I'm glad that the economy seems to be performing like that mm -hmm. on paper. Mm -hmm. But uh, personally, I also actually don't uh, feel the kind of economy that the president <laughs> seemed to, to to introduce to us yesterday. Mm -hmm. I don't know about your where you stand, yes. but for example, where he says that uh, household incomes have, have improved to a tune of 60%. Mm -hmm that these households are outside, the, they are now in the, the money economy. Mm. Uh, that now most of you members of the elite class are able to go for tourism. Yeah, yeah you, you could say, but uh, I for one, I am unable. I don't know which, one, <laughs> I don't know which elite class you're, you're, you're talking about, but okay. uh, not me. Right. And maybe, um, uh, I thought that there were key issues like uh, the, the, the recent attack uh, of our brothers, sisters, aunties, fathers, uh, say what you may, that are in Somalia. Mm -hmm. He has talked about the numbers, he has talked about how there were mistakes committed by the uh, gentlemen and ladies on the front line and the commanders, but I felt mm -hmm. he, he was non-sensitive mm -hmm. to people that have lost their dear ones. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in that attack, he should have been he should have been seen to be a little bit more em empathetic to those mm -hmm. families and be seen to condole and care okay. about those losses mm -hmm. uh, amidst uh, the different uh, reasons he gave for that unfortunate scenario. Mm -hmm. So, as head of state, he needed to have been seen to care about those. He says fifty four Al Shabab says one thirty seven, whatever the number. Mm. They are still Ugandan lives, so I thought the president could have done better yes. there. Also, the issue of our medical interns, currently it has been in the news. Mm -hmm. This is a matter that he did not talk about at all. Mm -hmm. But this is a very fundamental issue to the health uh, sector of our country. Okay. They, they, they provide, uh, they, they are a vein mm -hmm. amidst so many other veins that feed into the efficiency of our health sector. So I thought... Mm -hmm. uh, there, he should have made a comment, mm -hmm. whether in passing or in a concrete way. Okay. But he felt it lacked around that area. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'll come back for more specific uh, issues on some of the uh, ideas you've highlighted. Mr. Cromwell, let me come to you. What were your highs and your lows for, from the President's State of the Nation address? I thank you. I have been watching the president for quite some time, mm -hmm. and uh, I got to a point where I I reduced on my my attention to the president's speeches. Uh, so you didn't watch the speech? I read the speech. I watched the speech. Oh, and okay. I read <laughs> this time, yeah, yeah <laughs> because uh, yeah, we, we are taught. Yeah, 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 we are. Uh, I have been raised to to listen to held us, yeah. and for that matter, I had to pay due attention to the president. So you missed the national pageantry and, uh, and, and all the performances? But, well, the, it was nice. I, it was a pompous, a very interesting yes. event in yeah. Kololo. Yeah. And uh, 
it is incumbent, of course, upon the president to report mm. to the country the state mm. of the affairs. Our, yeah, because our... uh, ideally, you know, when you speak to citizens of, say, USA, citizens of uh, this uh, uh, Ghana, they're always looking forward to the state of the nation address as a moment to be inspired. So I'm surprised that... Uh, <laughs> is that a vote of no confidence? No, it is not indeed. But mm. it is, you know, the state of the nation is an mm. invention of the NRM government. Okay. And uh, it is in, in, embedded in the constitution of Uganda, 1995. Mm. Uh, previously, the, the, the president simply come to, to address the nation on maybe issues to do with the budget. Mm -hmm. But the NRM government introduced state of the nation. Mm. And in this case, the president comes to report to the mm. citizens of Uganda on mm. the successes and the challenges that he has encountered mm. uh, in, in running government. Mm. I am made to understand, of course, that years ago when, uh, when, when the president, Dr. Bote, for example, coming to address the nation mm. and uh, students who realized it's time to, to, for the president to come and talk, everyone would want to run yes. to go and listen to the president speak. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're expecting accountability. Mm -hmm. They're expecting to be spoken to. Mm -hmm. uh, the president will speak live to, to, to young people, to, to mm -hmm. every character in this country. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people these days would, uh, would be inspired mm -hmm. when they, they, they hear that the president of Uganda is going mm -hmm. to, to address the nation and they want to rush to the dining hall in, in Macquarie University, mm -hmm. not to miss the, the, the seat to watch mm -hmm. the, 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 the head of state speak, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I expected the president to first and foremost come and uh, recognize <coughs> the plight, that the, the evils that uh, befell this country, to apologize to the people of Uganda, most particularly the people of Karamoja, where it comes from, mm -hmm. on the issues to do with the high on seats, and to apologize to families who lost their lives mm -hmm. uh, um, mm -hmm. due to, 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 to hunger, mm -hmm. and also to, to, to give a comprehensive report to the mm -hmm. people of Uganda mm -hmm. regarding the, 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 the members of the armed forces, the UPDF, who died in Uganda, and then to go ahead to tell citizens of Uganda where we have been, where we are now, and where we are, where we are moving to. Mm -hmm. in the next few months or in the next year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thank you, Cromwell. You, you seem to suggest that uh, the president is no longer capable of mobilizing national spirit for further progress. Is that what I gather from your communication? I am not suggesting the president is not, uh, I mean, is incapable. Mm -hmm. uh, what I am and, uh, not sure about is the... Mm -hmm. the, the is the goodwill and whether he's surrounded by people who, uh, who inspire or motivate the president mm. to rally the country around uh, things that matter to mo most importantly to mm. the citizens of Uganda. Mm. Going by the state of the nation address, do you believe that the president uh, is still capable of performing at optimal level? Absolutely. Sure, as a chief executive officer, even if it is a company, now we are talking about the nation. It's more serious than just a mere company. You want your chief executive officer to be uh, at, at his or her best. So uh, do you believe that Mr. Museven is uh, still capable of performing at that level? The, the record of President Museven in this country is clear. Mm -hmm. And uh, you should be able to watch from his past record whether he's capable of performing to the expectations of this country. But indeed, mm -hmm. regardless, mm -hmm. uh, the the persons, the, 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 the people that he surrounds himself with yes. are the ones who should determine the mm. quality mm. of uh, deliverables mm. that the president should be able to give our country. Uh, but, uh, Comrade Darius, if you might allow me a second. Yes, please. I think uh, um, Comrade Cromwell would want to absolve the president of responsibility and of the, his mandate because okay. before the people around him, <laughs> before the people around him, what yeah. about him? Yes. And I think that's the mm. question you are putting to, to yeah. Comrade Cromwell. I mean, he's responsible for the team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's yeah. the one in charge of even choosing who is around him. Yes. So if he cannot choose mm -hmm. uh, adequately mm. and efficiently those that will be around him, then it, mm. it, and in a speech, he kept to, to he kept to referring to you people, uh, you people in I the ministry, you people, people this you, is you, for you, them, you, this you is now for me. If you want to keep uh, <laughs> in your poverty, yeah, it, yes. uh, it was due, uh, for example, the Katonga Bridge issue, yes. where he says the, the Uganda probably uh, 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 the Nanta who is in charge, yes, so he's in charge of uh, bringing the Nanta who is yes. to account mm -hmm. and and. and at, at a point, there's where the president seemed to be 
detached from what he was even saying. Mm. Uh, he's, a, he's a god somewhere, he's not a Ugandan, and he's speaking to these Ugandans mm -hmm. and you know, telling them, you people, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Mm -hmm. po seemingly posing questions to the audience, mm -hmm. which should be actually mm -hmm. posed to him for, mm -hmm. for answering. But and, so uh, this as notion I come, of those around as, as I him, to you, I think it doesn't, uh, doesn't. I am actually not insinuating that the president mm. should do, be excused for mm. not uh, being accountable. Mm. You know, he is responsible for mm. the kind of people he assigns responsible. I mean, he assigns the work. Mm. Uh, is the chief. Uh, accounting officer in this country. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he, uh, there's no excuse whatsoever. Oh, the president yeah. has the overall responsibility to account mm. to the citizens of Uganda mm. what has transpired in the past one year. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, I mean, from the general attitude and also the style of delivery, the time it takes, and then the, the whole environment. Mukisa, I mean, you, before you give me your highs and lows, do you think that this reflects the general attitude of sluggishness, poor manager, management in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the government of Uganda? Uh, concerning that, literally, me, has you said that sometimes the president speaks as if he's speaking to some Ugandans and is literally mm -hmm. not part of us. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> it also starts around with the people we work with. The people around him, they also influence the decisions which are going to come to what? To the public cause. Has the people be behind in the societies, we vote these people to go up there, help the president execute whatever he's supposed, and we expect them to deliver. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, us Ugandans, we don't get what we expect. Mm -hmm. You get so I literally feel there is some spaces missing mm -hmm. between the president and the members of parliament, the people we believe who are supposed to take Uganda at a higher level. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So, but what do you like, if any, from the president's speech? What did I like? Mm -hmm. uh, concerning the president's speech, I liked the fact he highlighted about the increase for the Uganda's economy which I, for one, I'm not being sarcastic, but I'm not seeing a bigger picture of it. Mm. I feel it's more of <clears throat> something documented. Because mm. he stated that ever since he came into power in 19, 1986, mm. he has been in power in almost like 60 years. Mm. So he says the economy has increased by 30 times per cent. Mm -hmm. Yet for I, for one, as a young Ugandan, I'm seeing the rate of unemployment is increasing. Mm -hmm. The rate of poverty is increasing. So I don't know which economy is increasing, yet literally we are suffering. You get each and every day. He's also spoke about industrialization, that they are improving it. Mm -hmm. Yet jobless Ugandans he said are, we are 30 uh, times better than we were. Yeah, we are 30 years. times better than mm. we were before he came into power. Mm. Yes, but I'm seeing still there is a missing gap. I don't believe that. Mm. Of course, we've seen some development. His Excellency has literally done for us a lot. But the statistics provided, they don't match with the actual thing we are looking at. Mm -hmm. Then I also come to my sector. Has a health minister of Macquarie University. Mm. I expected the president, as my colleague spoke about, to talk about the issue of interns. Mm. Actually, I watched the video waiting for, at least for those small, small sounds to be articulated that interns. The entire speech we were left out as medical students. At the end of the day, the government forgets that if there is no health, you can't increase the economy. Mm -hmm. In his speech, he said that this time round, our economy has increased by 5.5%. Mm -hmm. But according to the financial minister, for him, he says in the progressing years, we shall be rating from around 6.3 to 7.7. .7. And the president added <clears> that, <throat> underestimated that percentage and was like, we are going to actually go higher. So I would like to pose a question to our leaders up there. How are we going to increase the economy of our nation if we are not healthy? Mm -hmm. So I really expected the president to address our issue. 
has medics, mm-hmm. has doctors, mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, our li- your lives, they are in our hands. Mm-hmm. You can't expect us to work, to literally volunteer. Yeah, said without... right now, uh, I think this is from the minister that uh, mm. uh, internship is for the kids from rich families. What, what, what do you make of that? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, concerning, concerning that statement, it really deprived of the mm. less fortunate. So, because mm. you can't say intern is for the what the current Ugandans call the cold kids. What about us who come from family, ba- from humble backgrounds? Mm. You've not considered us. We expect our leaders to put all of us at the end of the day, we are Ugandans. Mm. We, we should have equal rights to every opportunity. Mm-hmm. If that means they are starting to put in classes that this, this class of people is supposed to get this and these ones are supposed to get this. Mm. But at the end of the day, up, up, uh, the child from a cool kid and the one from a humble kid, the ones who are going to treat you. So I beg the, our leaders to change that statement and they consider everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, from all of you clearly, it seems to me that there is a clear mismatch between the leadership of the political elites and then the ordinary citizens. And one of the problems that presidents talked about is the vice of corruption. Honorable Yamulevire, you are a lawyer. Tell me, do you think uh, or what are your thoughts um, on the vice of corruption as to whether or not this government is able of rooting out corruption? Well, I think corruption, maybe before that, the, recently during the, the Twitter uh, movement around the health situation within our country, mm-hmm. you've listened to horrifying testimonies of interns that at their different areas of, mm-hmm. of stationing and they were telling you how they would go to these places of work with no nothing they've eaten. Mm. Um, uh, some of them, their money is coming late. It was even an interesting story where the patient was the one asking the intern, doctor, are you fine? <laughs> because the, the doctor kept uh, yawning throughout the whole process. He was, he was in interviewing the... So the patient was doing the diagnosis on, on, the, on the student. But we can talk about these matters and, in, you know, uh, seem to joke and laugh about them here, mm. but uh, the health situation of our, of the country is in a, a dire situation, mm. and the 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 powers that be should not handle this issue of the interns with such uh, uh, sophistry. Mm. I, I, I was telling a friend that the ministry was sounding more like Marie Antoinette that if mm. they cannot mm. uh, afford bread why don't they buy cake mm. so the, the, they already they were already suffering at the at the internship places with mm. the government support but, but, but honorable but now yeah. mm. they, they are even now being told to mm. pay for for their own mm. placement mm. so what do you expect of, of that of the doctor now for example who was mm. yawning mm. and now will have to pay to actually mm. be where where the, 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 the at the station of, of work, mm. they were yawning when they were being aided by government. Now mm. they will be aiding them, so so you can expect this situation. But has have we somehow as a nation allowed this situation? Because uh, you know the situation of interns, as you described it, it's, mm. it's horrible. Yet you don't see enough civic action around the area to get accountability from government. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a whole topic. All together, that we mm. can have another day to look at the civic uh, consciousness and awareness, mm. but also uh, the leaders, uh, both in government and, and opposition, uh, mobilizing the, 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 the duty in mobilizing that consciousness. But we, mm. we might not have time to go into all that. On another day, I'll be, I'll be happy to come and discuss and that and topic. Engage on civic yeah. Engagement. Now, on the, on the matter of corruption, I think the president has been talking about this matter almost. Mm every other time in his address, but with yeah. n- never real uh, action. Mm-hmm. The other time I was listening to one of the commentators saying that, you remember last year when the president, the biggest contribution he did to the fight against corruption was mobilizing all of these corrupt people and uh, marching with them <laughs> against the corruption itself. Yeah. 
So it's a tongue in cheek for the president. Really, he made a few comments around it, mm -hmm. but you also know the comments he made to the IGG the other time when he told her to go, to go easy on mm -hmm. uh, his people. That uh, you know they are corrupt, but they are investing this money in the country. So mm -hmm. if you go so hard on them. They will, <laughs> they, will take, they will take the money outside the country. So for a president that sends these mixed signals, mm. it, it greatly undermines the fight uh, against, uh, against corruption. Mm. He, yes, I understand as a lawyer that the issue of the iron sheets, for example, is still a matter of court. Mm. But he could have commented on it and still stay within the safe zones mm -hmm. away from the subjudice. Mm -hmm. uh, He's sub a clear language and call, yes, 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 and and call them and out. Try, yes, mm -hmm. and, and call them out. So yeah. uh, for me, uh, the issue of corruption is known for this government. Mm -hmm. And as citizens and, uh, and Ugandans, we, we must pray that uh, it doesn't uh, send our country in a situation we, we cannot get it out of mm -hmm. uh, uh, before this government is gone. Mm -hmm. So uh, as long as the president keeps making the kind of comments he's making around the issue of corruption, however determined you might have officers that are within the system that would want to help in that situation, mm -hmm. we will not have uh, that matter resolved or even mitigated. Fair enough. Mm. Uh, Mr. Cromwell, yes. uh, what do you think uh, should have uh, been expected of the, of the president in his address uh, in order to, you know, given the current socio-economic situation of the country, what are some of those key or critical sectors that you think that the president should have highlighted uh, in order to move uh, Uganda forward? You know, I, I love this president. Mm. And uh, what, uh, what challenges my understanding is mm. his commitment to fighting corruption mm. as opposed to his rhetorics. Mm. Uh, there was a time the president made it clear that we cannot fight corruption like we do it in the book of Genesis chapter 1 where God said, uh, let there be this and it was the following day, mm -hmm. uh, let there be no corruption, mm -hmm. and then the following day on Tuesday, mm -hmm. there is no corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would expect a president of a country such as Uganda, the pearl of Africa, to, mm -hmm. to come and report to the citizens of Uganda mm -hmm. and say, fellow citizens, I report to you. Last year, we arrested five ministers, and we were able to recover stolen assets and given back to the people of Uganda. Mm -hmm. I would expect the president to, to give guidelines and cheer up the citizens of Uganda on how to address this vice. Mm -hmm. It is very, of course, dangerous for a country such as ours, uh, where we see uh, we are an emerging economy. Yes. We depend on, on donor countries mm -hmm. to facilitate or fund our, our, our budget and that the little that we have is stolen away by, by a few people. I have actually written very comprehensively on issues to do with, the, with, with corruption here in Uganda and in East, and in East Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, I, I, I'm afraid of is that the president is not committed in practice mm -hmm. in fighting corruption. I would like him to fight corruption both in theory and in practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are not seeing that and he's surrounded by corrupt officials. Mm -hmm then uh, you know we, 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 we are not any far. When corruption becomes, it is of course like now, uh, mm. a system that runs the government. Mm. When it becomes a system yeah. of governance, then the country is gone forever. Actually, even so corruption is the modus operandi. Yeah, even, even his son, yeah, yeah, the because General Hosey, yes. actually has called out his father on, yeah. on, the, <laughs> on the same matter of, of yeah, corruption. Yeah, but, but, but is General Hosey serious about calling out his father? Or it's just a political Well, serious or not, but mm -hmm. if, he, if he, at least he's also talking about it, it mm -hmm. could have been seen to seemingly look like noise from the citizens and maybe the opposition, but when your, mm. your own family member, your eldest son, mm. you know, makes a comment around it and is mobilizing mm. around the same issue for his yeah. uh, mm. uh, intended presidential ambitions, then Illegal. It's, it's, it's worth a all contribution. Right. All right, to go on from 
And uh, yeah, you, 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 you can imagine the, the state of the nation now. Mm. What is the state of Uganda in as far as corruption is concerned? Mm. How many corrupt officials have been arrested, mm. prosecuted, mm. and how much have we recovered mm. from those that, that, that were stolen from the country? Mm. No. And PDM, uh, and, PDM and so on, and the high-end shit in Mioga, Karamoja, yeah. Mioga, Mioga, and so on. Yes. And by the way, so why is the president, scandal, yes, yeah. why is the president or government leaping mm. from one economic program to the other? Mm. The other one was called Prosperity for All, mm. the other one was called NAD, mm -hmm. the other one was called uh, the Mioga, Mioga, the other one Mioga was called to, uh, to the other. What yeah, is the problem? PDM why now. are we not <laughs> modifying yeah. this very one we have and sustain mm. if they are really working? Mm. They are all infested with corruption. Mm. And uh, what I would expect this government to do, the president himself, mm. is to do something that will make some Uganda think, Uganda think mm. that probably the president is crazy. Arrest corrupt officials, mm -hmm. jail them, mm. recover what is stolen. This mm. is what happens in other countries. Look at Rwanda, look at countries mm. in Southern Africa. Mm. Heads of state rise up and But you said that sure that a number of ministers on. like uh, Agnes Nambutu, like uh, Mr. Honorable but these guys are walking free. They are walking but free, uh, and uh, is it a of justice? But they are doing. They, they, they are involved in business. Mm. They, they, they are in parliament. They are, they are in their offices doing work. Now is, that they are Amosu, I think was representing the country. In yeah, yeah. yeah. skipped uh, mm. a court hearing. In but a also, normal, I think in a normal democracy, we would expect them to be uh, mm. put on katebe. Mm. Uh, waiting investigation. Yeah, and also those those I kind think. of investigations should be given special attention from the judiciary, I believe. Yes, and yes. also the president has the mm. the mm. power to ensure that these kind of cases are fast tracked so that uh, we can have conclusion to their matter mm. and justice for 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 example the people of Karamoja and the issue of the mm. of the iron sheets. But these matters I can assure you will drag in court. You've seen examples of those. Mm. You know that there is a minister who was convicted of on a corruption charge by own admission, not mm -hmm. by evidence of court, mm -hmm. but by her own admission. But mm -hmm. she's now a serving minister in the in the current uh, <laughs> cabinet of the president. So, yeah, so you know, it's it's all there for you to, to make your own judgment. Very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Let me come to you, Honorable Mukisa. Uh, as a student, I want to hear your, your perspective uh, as a student. What do you think is really missing to make this country work? What do we need to do? Uh, to make this really, the country work, first mm. of all, I'll start with still our leadership. Mm. Yes. I'll not fall far from what they have been talking about, corruption. Not mm. until we eradicate corruption out of that out of the story, out of the equation, mm -hmm. I don't think we are going to go anywhere. Because mm -hmm. the government has literally tried to involve in the young youth mm -hmm. to start out businesses, providing mm -hmm. that money through yoga, mm -hmm. those circles supporting women, mm -hmm. but realize that this money actually never reaches the person mm -hmm. it's supposed to go to. Mm -hmm. That money always spends in space. I listened to the president who was like, among the things we're going to do to improve our economy, to take this country further, we are also going to increase money like for Mioga. Mm -hmm. Yet the previous Mioga, we still didn't get the money. Mm -hmm. How sure are we that this time around we are going to get the what? The money. So supervision is so, so, so little. Like they don't even consider that if this money didn't reach, mm -hmm. are we sure that the the lowest person is going to get the money again. Mm -hmm. Corruption is literally the biggest disease in Uganda that mm -hmm. it's even affecting the young ones. Mm -hmm. Because the young generation copies from who is above. So those people who are up, if they cannot eradicate corruption, you can't expect it to move from here. Mm -hmm. So the government has to really fight corruption. And I don't know how they're going to fight it if we have the same <laughs> leaders mm -hmm. who are corrupt at but a fight the government against is also the saying corruption. That, uh, the entire citizenry is corrupt. They say corrupt. Everyone is corrupt. The whole society is corrupt. So where do we start from? But we choose these leaders to guide us. I think it mm. has to start with yeah. them before mm. they come down. Mm. So if the people above can't eradicate corruption, mm. how do you expect the young ones to remove corruption? But the other way to look at it is to say that because the citizenry are corrupt, 
and these are not my words, but uh, that's what I hear from the <laughs> public conversations, then doesn't that take away their, you know, ability to demand for accountability, to demand, uh, to demand for the fight against corruption? Yeah, but you see, it's a question of leadership. Mm. Uh, the leader, you're not the mm. the the ordinary uh, citizen. Yes. So yes. your bar, yeah, yeah your mm. bar mm. should be a little bit higher, mm. yeah. so that you are an example mm. to the ordinary society. Mm. Once you seemingly look like you're serious about fighting this vice mm. and about living an exemplary life, mm. then it will inevitably reflect on the society. Mm. Well, that doesn't mean that we do not have a duty to do as citizens of the of the country in that fight. Mm -hmm. I think at, at personal levels, at, at an individual level, mm -hmm. we need to question our own integrity mm -hmm. and try to aspire to better uh, levels in terms of, of that agenda. But that does Absolutely. not at all absolve Absolutely. the leadership <laughs> of their responsibility in the fight. Fair enough. And uh, let me come back to you, Yam. Uh, this time around, talk some little bit of economics. The president talked about increasing numbers uh, of foreign direct investments, talked about a number of uh, industries that are coming up, the policy of uh, government to invest in industrial parts. He also talked about uh, the rising numbers of tourism. He talked about the plan to build uh, airports in order to uh, you know, enhance, you know, facilitate uh, the tourists who come around. And he also talked about oil. Actually, he said that our government is in high gear to ensure that the first drop of oil comes out by 2025. Isn't, isn't this really something to be optimistic about? Yeah, like I said at the start, the statistics paint a good picture, really, to be honest mm. to, to the president and, and the government. Mm. Uh, he, went, he was deliberate. Mm. He, he went into a bit of details unusually like he does, into the levels of, of percentages of coffee production and the growth, mm -hmm. the milk, mm -hmm. um, and a number of other food crops around, the, around their fish, mm -hmm. and also the plan of uh, building a number of airports. But you see, for example, mm -hmm. we bought uh, aeroplanes and then packed them and started negotiating for routes and uh, areas. <laughs> The areas where they would, you know, they would land. Mm. You can imagine what kind of planning is that. Mm. And then we have, uh, we, it's now about five years, we are refurbishing the Entebbe International Airport Terminal for a country <laughs> that takes about five years uh, refurbishing and, and, a terminal. And there have been said it's like 71% yes, for the last the, two. Yeah. Mm. So you can imagine how long it will take to build airports mm. if we are refurbishing mm. a terminal at one of the airports we have. Mm. So, so the president always seems to speak good and optimistic and draws wonderful plans, but when it comes to implementation and over time, you 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 are a bit hesitant to believe what what he he says. Mm. Uh, foreign direct investment, yes, even from the statistics he was giving us, uh, growth in the tourism uh, industry. But you see, uh, we are exploring uh, oil, mm. and uh, m the major area of our strength in tourism is the ecosystem and diversity and all that. Mm. So. The, the carbon emissions that will come from that uh, uh, exercise of extracting oil, with the, we'll need to balance it with mm, how we safeguard mm, mm, our eco uh, uh, tourism and all that, because that's what we actually yeah, there uh, is give that out as young the, as the on one hand, but on the other hand, with the uh, increasing anti uh, oil protests, you know, mm -hmm. been seeing campaigns of anti eco, stop eco campaigns on social media. Mm -hmm. and seems to have uh, attracted attention of uh, donors. Do you believe in the ability of government of Uganda to pull off these uh, oil projects? I think that the president, to give him credit, had tried to mm -hmm. uh, or seemingly put up an impression that he was trying to manage this oil business quite well, mm -hmm. took a bit of time on negotiating the mm -hmm. FDIs, uh, uh, and the different um, agreements on the extraction of the oil. Mm -hmm. But every other time we seem to be hitting the ground because of these protests and the pressure from the European mm -hmm. uh, Western powers, then yes. this bank pulls out and the other company pulls out. Now, mm -hmm. our, the recent, I think, Sunchat has pulled out. Mm 
mm. there are rumors of now Exim Bank of China uh, no, patching up that gap. Mm. But uh, yeah, I think that all that pressure around the extraction of our oil is really uh, the fact that the president has tried to negotiate a better deal than has been in the African continent, mm. and certainly the Western powers will not take that lying low. Okay. So it remains to be seen whether we will come out victorious or not. Okay. But I think that uh, on that area, it's a pro and con situation. Mm. There are issues that the Western world can jump on and pretend to be, you know, fighting for the for Ugandans. And also the president, on the other hand, there are issues he can jump on in the extraction issue and show that it's for the good of the country. Yes. So it's a, it's a question of perceptions. Uh, yeah. fair, fair enough. Cromwell, yes, please. Uh, you know, building on what Yam has said, the president promised the country that the first oil, uh, the first drop of oil will come mm. out in 2025. Now. Do you believe him? I want it to happen within my lifetime. Mm. Uh, I, I, I think I should believe him. Mm. But of course, this president is faced with the imperialist uh, interruption. Mm. Uganda is a poor country. Mm. Uganda is, uh, has got heavy debts to pay. Mm. And uh, I'm actually offended by imperial powers uh, mm. that try to interfere with Uganda's oil exploration. Mm. This oil provides an opportunity uh, mm. to get rid of poverty in our country, mm. provides an opportunity to, 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 to address the debt, the burden, the debt burden that we have mm. in, in our nation and to, mm. to, to generally uplift the standard of, of Uganda. Mm. Uganda is not the only country that is blessed with oil. There are so mm. many other countries mm. and uh, they, they, they have managed it. Mm. So I think uh, what is important is for the government of Uganda and the Ugandan people as a whole to, mm. to stand their ground and, mm. uh, and engage with the serious partners who mm. are really interested in the development of this country. Mm. I think the, the interest of foreign powers, of course, mm. is to ensure that we are burdened and we continue remaining their slaves and continue borrowing from the World Bank. And so, no, mm. these <coughs> oil projects should be a way of getting us out mm. of the decades of, of sufferings yeah. that we have had. Then on government... Uh, yeah, but, but just before you move on, these you call imperials who happen to include some Ugandans, at least from what we see from social media, argue that actually the oil is a danger to the environment, which environment or ecosystem is one of the key factors to tourism, and also argue that the oil industry is an old technology that we should be going green. What's your response to that? Well, I, I, I am not un, un, unmindful of, uh, of Ugandans who are not seeing the need. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what, what I'm trying to bring across is that uh, there are countries that have produced oil and are doing very well. Even now they are doing and very well. Doing <laughs> so they are well. on, the own Western powers. <laughs> sure, yeah, go to well. Germany, yeah. go to I Russia. Germany. Yes, Germany. Yes, so, yes, yes, so are you saying these are double standards? Yeah, it's double standards. Precisely. Yeah. We should My, reach a level where we should not allow people to be dictating yeah. on us, on our mm. economic model. And mm. then on the direct... Uh, Maybe just Cromwell, just okay. a minute, sorry. Maybe to add a ride on Cromwell's point, the only challenge there is our corruption. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, if the oil was handled uh, well, mm -hmm. I think it could be a greater uh, resource for the country. Exactly. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you're you asking a question about uh, so you, direct you your last foreign point, investment. Yeah. Go for a break yes, and yes. Pick the, it up from there. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. the, the, the president in his speech to parliament uh, indicated that uh, it, it was planning to, to extend roads to such and such a place. For example, mm. out of a road from Kitgum to, mm. to Kidepo National yeah. Park and all yeah. across the, the, the extended road. To, yes, to promote tourism. But what was lacking in that uh, statement was, uh, was when, you know, I would have expected the president to come and say, uh, fellow citizens, uh, uh, by March next year, the government, my <laughs> government, is committing uh, this amount of trillions to, to construct the road uh, yes. from Kitgum to, to, to Kidepo, and we expect it to, have, to be completed within a span of maybe of three years. Be specific yeah. instead no, of giving still, us blanket still information. still the middle class. Yeah. So when you put the work, yeah. <laughs> when you should, we are still working on middle income economy. Middle income. 2020. 2020 was supposed to be middle income. <laughs> so timelines. Three years ago. Yeah. All right. All right, gentlemen and ladies, thank you very much. Dearest, uh, our gentle viewers, uh, please stay with us. We are going for a very short break. When we come back, we shall delve into the second segment of the show. 
where we shall focus on the performance of Parliament during its second session, 2030 the Digital rights are those human rights and legal rights that allow individuals to access, use, create and publish digital media or to access and use computers, other electronic devices and telecommunication networks. Digital rights include a right to freedom of expression, information and communication through technology, a right to privacy and data protection, a right to credit for personal works, a right to universal and equal digital access, a right to identity, a right to anonymity, a right to be forgotten and a right for protection of minors among others. The state's digital rights are frequently violated through various unfair actions, for example, blockage of websites and social networks, theft of credentials, unauthorized use of people's data for personal gain, privacy intrusion, online censorship, arrests and intimidation of online users, internet blockages, and a proliferation of laws and regulations that undermine the potential of technology to drive social, economic, and political development worldwide. It is hence every citizen's responsibility to respect rights of other digital users and to speak out or report to the responsible parties when one's rights are violated. Welcome back from the short break. Uh, thank you very much for staying with us, our dearest gentle viewers. In the second segment, we are going to focus on the performance of Parliament during its second session. But before that, please go on Twitter and give us a like, share and a comment at Civic Space TV. Yeah, let's get back into it. Of course, the State of the Nation address also marks the end of a parliamentary session. Let's reflect back together with our viewers on the performance of parliament. And I want to start by asking you what you think are some of the critical legislations that this 11th parliament has been able to put through during the second session and how relevant they are to the needs and aspirations of Ugandans. I think you are just to make very few quick comments. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where the president was talking about investment in automobiles. So you yes, can yes. see his vision yeah. and brand, the vision, yeah. the Akira and you know yeah. calling upon parliament mm -hmm. to support this kind of ventures. Mm -hmm. But it sends you into asking your talking about automobiles when the in turn is not paid, when, eh? when, when water is being cut off from hospitals and the mm -hmm. citizen would want to access health services. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it's a <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's a mixture of long term, short term. I think the president doesn't get the priorities right there on what is long term and what is short term. Indeed. So, and then also the Pamoja bit, this excited mm -hmm. uh, many sports fanatics mm -hmm. around the, the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, the president seemed to be part of it and, you know, pushing for it mm -hmm. together with uh, Mama Janet, Minister of Education. Mm -hmm. I thought that in this address he would uh, slightly comment, mm -hmm. uh, borrowing Cromwell's uh, um, argument, some timelines of maybe when we could begin some of the stadiums. But well, yeah. that's... Uh, yeah, uh, maybe, uh, to be fair, I think that, uh, you know, to your argument, you know, he told us that majority of Ugandans are still in the subsistence That's sector, like, um, mainly agriculture. So maybe he would have expected uh, a clear program on mechanization of agriculture. He actually talked about it, talked about tractors, <laughs> and said that we've now added something about 344 to make it around 655 tractors. Mm -hmm. But mechanization and commercialization, mm -hmm. you're talking about 10,500-something parishes. Mm -hmm. If you think about the PDA model, mm -hmm. those alone can serve what? Mm -hmm. Can they even serve mm -hmm. uh, about 50% of, of that? No. Mm -hmm. So we are still way, way, way away from, from that agenda, even if you looked at it from that angle. But to drive into the question that you ask, yes. maybe for the purposes of our, of our viewers, mm -hmm. I could uh, run through yeah, uh, sure. many of them here sure. so that they, they get to know. Mm -hmm. So we have the Companies Amendment Bill 2022. Uh, the Insolvency uh, Act, the Law Revision Amendment Bill. This one enables them to, you know, make certain appeals and and repeals of different uh, sections of different laws, museums and monuments bill. Mm -hmm. How we preserve these uh, antiquities that are crucial to the country. Mm -hmm. This activity and sports bill. 
the one of uh, the the husband to the speaker <laughs> 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 the anti-racism did the small arms and light weapons control bill i think that one is informed by the karamoja <laughs> situation okay. our brothers there and then the microfinance deposit taking institution income tax value added traffic and road safety due to the number of Mm. of uh, accidents that we've had on our roads, lotteries and gaming, mm. the tax procedures bill, appropriation bill, exercise duty, public health, partnerships, many of, mm. many of those. But you'll see that there are few that really to, uh, address the, the, ordinary, mm. the ordinary person. So there's been work done, again, mm. statistics mm. Uh, from Parliament in terms of the bills that have been passed that mm. could aid different sectors accordingly. Uh, mm. uh, the Markets Act, for example, is one of those Mm -hmm. legislations that I think is, is quite a good one. There are a number of issues that are missing in it, but they can finally guarantee the security of our vendors mm -hmm. uh, within the different markets, especially within the, the mm -hmm. districts of, that are now called uh, cities. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of statistics, yes, there's been good work done, some legislations that are, you know, highlights. Mm -hmm. But you see, as long as the ordinary citizen is unable to have their children access education, mm -hmm. reasonable education, mm -hmm. are unable to access uh, drugs and uh, health services mm -hmm. at the centers of, uh, of health provisions, mm -hmm. are unable to access reasonably safe water, mm -hmm. uh, parliament means nothing to them. Mm -hmm. So we want to see a more bold parliament mm -hmm. on matters that are crucial to the livelihood, the well-being of the ordinary peasantry Ugandan that the president talks about. Mm. When there is no, when water is, 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 is cut off in these different hospitals, Naguru, and you know, there are pregnant mothers there, there are uh, people with, uh, with uh, suffering from, that have had accidents and that need water. Mm. And even the personnel there themselves, mm. uh, when interns do not have uh, money to deploy them, where is the parliament on these kind of, of, of matters? Mm -hmm. That's where the ordinary citizen wants to, to hear you mm -hmm. make a stand as parliament. And I think mm -hmm. in that kind of angle, mm -hmm. they are refusing, failing, or unable mm -hmm. to be bold and tell the executive so that if, if, I get, if, if I get you well, are you saying that in terms of legislation, the parliament has tried to you know, put up an above average performance, but when it comes to oversight, when it comes to yeah mainly appropriation, over, uh, appropriation <coughs> yes, yeah. then they have let the ordinary yeah, government yeah, yeah. down. On, yeah, on yeah. legislation, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, not only this parliament. Over mm -hmm. time, our parliaments have been passing good laws mm -hmm. to aid different sectors. But mm -hmm. the, for example, monuments and the uh, <laughs> and, uh, and the monuments uh, yeah. uh, act really. How many Ugandans care about such? Yeah. Uh, so, so yes, the legislation good, but you know it's, it's an important law. Mm -hmm. But the oversight appropriation, mm -hmm. the, the boldness of parliament to bring the executive to to respond to some of these yeah. crucial mm -hmm. matters that are mm -hmm. co communicate to the ordinary citizen directly when the iron sheets of the mm -hmm. of our brothers in, in Karamoja and sisters are, mm -hmm. are, are handled in that of kind of, of manner. What the exact, happens? The yes, the what, what, yeah. what happens when is Parliament mm -hmm. in such a Should moment? Should be the iron sheets of Uganda yes. in yeah. Karamoja. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, of Ugandans in, in, in Karamoja. Exactly. Thank, thank you, Kromo, yeah. for that for that yeah. correction. Mm. So, so the point is, is, is that we need to hear them be a little bit, a little bit more bold. Mm -hmm. Legislation, yes, reasonably well, but where is their voice in terms of checking the, the executive and in terms of stamping their feet mm -hmm. on matters that could communicate rather easily to the, mm -hmm. to the one I see. This is my last one to you. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that in essence there is a mismatch between the aspirations of Ugandans and the MPs that represent them? The, the, I wouldn't put it like that, but mm. there is... Um... And, and I ask this because as a lawyer, I know mm. you're familiar with the principle mm. of uh, principal agents, mm. the yeah, agency yeah, yeah, principle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. Mm. So do you think that uh, there are distortions in that, in that principle? Because that's the whole idea around which representative democracy is premised. Yeah, the challenge is that, you, you know, the quality of our parliament, with all due respect, some of the members there that really live up to mm. what an MP should be in our current state. Mm. The, it's majorly filled with political entrepreneurs, non-statesmen, non-patriots, mm. non-leaders, mm. because politicians 
are naturally self-centered in a human being. So mm -hmm. self-interest usually overrides. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot to have majority of those mm -hmm. appreciating that there is a self-interest, yes, but it must be balanced with the public interest. Mm -hmm. So if uh, I speak up and I am bold, I might lose my, my constituents next term, mm -hmm. I better shut up. Mm -hmm. But at what expense? Yes. So, so, so it's not that there is a mismatch. There is lack of courage. There is lack of boldness. There is mm -hmm. lack of leadership. There is lack of statesmanship. Mm -hmm. There is lack of patriotism mm -hmm. in that parliament on the whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honorable Vanessa, let me come to you. You know, given that uh, introduction to this conversation regarding the performance of parliament, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts? My thoughts regarding this current parliament. Mm. I feel we are living in a country where we have self-centered and selfish leaders. Of course, not all of them, mm. but the greatest percentage. Mm. In that, when these people come go to represent us in the parliament, they actually go and feed themselves. Mm. They don't deliver to the mm. what? To the society. There are mm. areas you, you reach at, you, you look at the roads, you'll be like, is this area really having a member of parliament mm -hmm. being represented? The president said the roads were a priority of NIM since the last 20 years. <laughs> yeah, and you, see, you must also know that it took citizenry action yeah. to actually have, for example, the roads in Kampala worked yeah. on. But yeah. it should have been an issue of the area MPs, you know, to put up pressure in, roads in, in the parliament. Capital, which yes, in the face, in the capital, the, the face of the country. Yeah. Still, even mm -hmm. concerning, because recently, there was blockage of water mm. in in different what in different hospitals, mm. so you realize that the members of the parliament for those corresponding areas they haven't literally done a good job because mm. in each society hospitals schools should be priorities. Mm. So if at all we are still having hospitals without equipment, mm. we are still having hospitals where doctors are not paid. Mm. We are having school we are having schools where. Children just go, but they are not taught. Teachers are ever striking. We are not being paid. Mm. The member of parliament for that given area, literally, mm. you are not benefiting us. You are not doing what us Ugandans expect you to do. Mm. And I've realized our leaders, they are more of talkers. Mm. Ugandans are so good at documenting things, speaking out, you are going to do this, you are going to do this. Actually, if you are to read books of Uganda, we are 100%. But when it comes to hands-on, what have we achieved? Mm -hmm. We are still way too below. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, <coughs> to be fair to parliamentarians, when you talk about delivery of schools, when you talk about delivery of water, uh, is it within their mandate? Won't one urge that this is the role of the executive to deliver services and the role of the parliament to legislate to appropriate monies to provide those services. Yeah, yeah, but still, it is, you know, leadership is in categories. Mm -hmm. You get. Mm -hmm. So, if the money comes from up, mm -hmm. you as a member of parliament of your given society, it mm -hmm. means you have a voice, you have a say, mm -hmm. apart from me, a commoner. Because me, I can't go straight to the parliament. But you have access. Mm -hmm. So, our the parliament is literally the bridge between us, the commoners, mm -hmm as the people of Uganda and the executive up. So okay. if it doesn't represent us, how are we going to get the services? Fair enough. Cromwell, what's your take on the performance of the 11th parliament during its second session? Oh, well, uh, the parliament of Uganda uh, is supposed to be a very powerful institution. Mm. But I'm afraid to say we have a really a palace parliament to some degree. Mm. And uh, for that matter, it, it makes us lose track of what we are supposed to, ex to really uh, achieve as a, as a country. Mm. You have noted the quality of debate in that house. Mm -hmm. And the quality of debate is dependent on the quality of people that are sent there mm -hmm. by the voters. Mm -hmm. A member of parliament is supposed to be the emblem of the people, mm -hmm. representing the interests of the people, mm -hmm. the authority of the people, mm -hmm. the image of the people. You're so speaking about quality, Cromwell, and sorry to intervene. Then who is to blame? The, the, the voter or the parliamentarian? Because if the 
if the quality of parliamentarians is not good enough, so do we blame the one who has been elected as an MP or we, we blame the one who has sent them? I, Don't, isn't, isn't it fair to say that, uh, that the communities get their own leaders? I don't want to sound like the other British member of parliament, I think she's called Emily Thornbury, uh -huh. who said that those who voted leave, who, who, who voted leave uh, during the Brexit, <laughs> those voters were stupid. I don't want to sound like that. But of course, uh, the, uh, the quality okay. of people that we sent to parliament okay. is dependent on okay. the people, the voters themselves. Yes. And also the circumstances of, uh, the, that are prevailing in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, Actually, I think that's this, this is not a parliament. This yeah. The circumstances, yeah, circumstances maybe. Yeah, this is not yeah. a parliament mm -hmm. where you can stand and, and, and legislate and debate and you can walk free on the street of Kampala and mm -hmm. go and eat in mm -hmm. Seraton and you're, you're free. Mm -hmm. When you go to the United Kingdom, for example, a mm -hmm. member of parliament can mm -hmm. argue with the prime minister, mm -hmm. comes out, rides his bus calls, crosses over and buys a bottle of, of water and sits in a, in a restaurant and eats freely and there's no one... Uh, for the, there's no scare, there, there, there's no fear. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a, a parliament where people are really not sure mm -hmm. of what happens when, when, they, when they speak their minds and, and, and so on. Although, of course, there are a few bold, mm -hmm. of, of bold cases too. Mm -hmm. I expected this kind of parliament to stand up on issues pertaining to the economy of Uganda, mm -hmm. on the issues to do with the PDM. Uh, you, we have been talking clearly about uh, how cooperatives have been working very well. Countries mm -hmm. like Korea and mm -hmm. Singapore mm -hmm. have performed very tremendously well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we attribute their successes to, to, to their economic models. Mm -hmm. If we really confess that, for example, cooperatives have been working well, why are we running to PDM? Mm -hmm. Why don't we build on the cooperative mm -hmm. societies that were uh, created by the Uganda People's Congress and, and we make the country to go on? so that a child of a poor farmer in, in the village can, can be able to send a, a child to the same school with a child of a, mm -hmm. or with, with a prime minister and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. I expected parliament uh, to, to, to rise up and speak very boldly about issues pertaining to corruption that we spoke about in the, in, in the previous session. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the, there are people who are running business in this country that are supposed to be accountable to the citizens of Uganda mm -hmm. regarding the, 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 the corruption scandals that they've been involved in, the iron sheets and so on. Mm -hmm. I expected our parliament to rise up and speak up seriously uh, about the, uh, this mm -hmm. matter. This, um, my colleague has openly uh, uh, said clearly over the issues that are challenging the health sector, the, the interns. Mm -hmm. But we have representatives, they are health officials, they are, we are people who are uh, who have background in medicine and health, and they, we expected them to speak very boldly about this matter, so mm -hmm. that uh, we know the direction that our young people, medi medics are, are taking, uh, they are not interrupted. Mm -hmm. And this kind of legislation, I mean, the way things are handled, they discourage people uh, from in, uh, enrolling in, in, in health practices. Mm -hmm. So really, I, by and large, I think uh, there's need for government, I mean, for our parliament, to, to be bold and check the other two, uh, two, mm. two, two legs yeah, of government. I, I hear you, but pushing a little bit more on the issue of quality, because quality is, is very important, the performance yeah. of government to performance in parliament, uh, because you know that the governments are aristocracies of knowledge. Mm. So, of course, to sail through all those documents of government, government reports to investigate, definitely requires certain levels of competencies. Yet, when Professor Nwagaba went to compete in Kavara, full professor, one of the celebrated professors at McKay University has done a lot of research with, with the government itself, competed, I think he got less than 1% of the votes. The same story with you, our good friend, Professor P.L. Lumumba. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Across. Oh, he is a very eloquent and renowned professor of law. Yeah. He ran for parliament somewhere in the Nyanza province uh, and he lost the election. Of course that happens. You oh, don't okay. relate well okay. uh, with the voters. Sometimes what you think matters to the voters is not what, really, mm -hmm. what is really the, 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 the mm -hmm. case. Uh, yeah, so uh, the, the, there is really need to, to understand the voters. One of the men who lost election in, I think, Zambia mm. said, I failed to understand the voters, and that is why I lost the election. Uh. Uh, 
There is one in what? Kenya who said that there was no meeting of minds. <laughs> yes, one <laughs> that, that I... I've that, been yes. to so. <laughs> Sure, there's one, one important... One young lawyer in Kenya who said that his mind was so high, <laughs> ah, so he lost yes, the yes. vote because there was failure yeah, of meeting of minds, minds <laughs> with the uh, ordinary voter. Yeah, I lost election myself, of course, in 2021. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I lost okay. election, not because I'm incapable, of, but, uh, you know, Okay. I think uh, I was the not the desire. Meet. <laughs> Something like that. All right, let me, let me. But there's one thing that you needed yes. to know about our parliament, by the way. Yeah. I, I tried to invest some time reading about the parliament of Uganda and previous governments. Mm -hmm. And the Ugandan parliament was interested in the affairs of Africa mm -hmm. and even global affairs. Mm -hmm. I am very concerned about the, the manner in which we pay attention to matters that pertaining to Africa. And yet we, 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 we say that we are, we, we are Pan-Africans. Mm -hmm. We have issues unfolding, security issues unfolding in Sudan right now. Mm -hmm. The parliament of Uganda is not talking anything about it. How many citizens of Uganda have we rescued? What has happened? You know, what is the diplomatic relation between Uganda I mean, and, 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 and Sudan? How is it ongoing? What we're only seeing are pictures of, 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 of portal events of mm. people coming from Sudan and, and uh, interacting with our president. Mm. But we wanted government parliament to be engaging our, our I mean, talking about these issues, mm. debating issues to do with the, 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 the conflict, the, the peace, uh, the gap we have in Democratic Republic of Congo and uh, in Somalia and so <coughs> on. Mm. So our participation, our engagement in the affairs of Africa as a parliament mm. really needs to be uh, to be reconsidered. Otherwise, we are alienating ourselves and living like we're on an, an, uh, our own island. Fair enough. Yam, you're the lawyer on the panel. And one of the legislations that have elicited the most uh, attention, uh, both within Uganda but also across the globe, is the issue of an, is the Anti Homosexuality Act. Is it a fair legislation? What are its consequences? Is it a good law? Is it a bad law? I think that the, the issue <clears throat> of uh, homosexuality is still a matter of debate, not just in Uganda, but across, mm. be it in the States, be it uh, uh, in UK, be it uh, in the other Western uh, countries. And in every debate, there are those that are for pro and those that are, are against. Mm. So um, I think it's a debate that will continue to evolve mm. and evolve until certainly uh, one side wins the, the day of the debate. Mm. Uh, interestingly, um, because of our dependent nature on... Uh, on our fellow human beings in other continents, mm. maybe more advanced continents. Mm. Uh, sometimes uh, we are forced to take on cultures that we have not necessarily interrogated at mm. our own pace mm. and within our own cultural <coughs> dimensions mm. and therefore take a decision that we are all agreeable to or that we are generally mm. acceptable to and therefore have ownership of these different cultures that we could have integrated within mm -hmm. our own society. However, away from the debate of the substance, I think that the way it has been handled in Uganda mm -hmm. by the government or the players mm -hmm. has not helped the cause of the genuine and, mm -hmm. and uh, debate uh, that is just on both ends, mm -hmm. because it seems to be something the pres the government in particular the president pulls out every other time is having issues with the with the donor world mm. as a as a leverage for 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 bargaining and you see like you are saying you need to be careful how you you look at the whole uh, scenario of that matter mm. because there's a lot of geopolitics involved <coughs> yes. around it we've had our oil you know a lot of, of pressure mm. on on its extraction mm. Uh, now you're hearing that uh, we are being bombed in in, mm. in Somalia. Mm. These are security concerns, but mm. for the geo. I, I just read an center. article that uh, the HIV treatment center in Kampala is dry. Yeah, just also, because of the same. Oh. Yeah, I, I also heard that that uh, people are so so the the the, ins, the insinuation is that those that we are picking the drugs are gay. Mm. 
So they are now fearing to come and <laughs> that's, that's what the article didn't say. Yeah, the article was, but, by, was by Reuters though. Yeah, which, which is uh, okay. Yeah, which is okay. a, I know okay. one so which yes, is reputable, yes. okay. but also has its own funders. Uh, okay. Yeah. So so the problem of this debate is that it has been hijacked by different interests, mm. and it's therefore not easy for an ordinary Ugandan to mm. appreciate the concept as of in its own essence, mm. because government is using it for its own uh, issues, the Western world is using it for its own issues. Mm. You see, it's also a tongue-in-cheek for the Western world. If you're pushing for human rights, mm. and then you're saying you're pulling out uh, in terms of HIV, AIDS, and all that, then what about the patient that has been receiving that treatment? Mm. You are inevitably killing them. Mm. So what human rights mm -hmm. are you actually agitating for? Mm if you're causing loss of life. Mm. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky area, mm. but I believe like all other debates, mm. uh, it will come to a conclusion. Yeah, and uh, you know, listening to the... Maybe just to comment a bit mm. on the parliament, mm. uh, so that we can close it well. I think Dr. VSJ and some other people have continued to say that we are prisoners. Parliament is not <laughs> absolved of the prison. Yes. It's also a prisoner. Mm of the circumstances that Brother Cromwell was talking about, mm. because you must know also how its leadership is determined. Mm. Where does it come from? Mm. And do they I want to keep I wanted us to come to that bit hey, okay. in the concluding hey, bit. Okay. Yeah, because I wanted us to first evaluate the legislation, okay. and then we evaluate the context within which parliament operates. And maybe the way that law came in. Yeah. I think it was slightly after the Iron Sheet saga and all that. Mm. And you know how now Parliament people were, uh, you know, looking at it as eh, even these ones we thought could. Mm. And then the anti homosexuality mm. through us, man, that's why somebody claims mm. there was a she behind him. I don't know how true that is. Yes. So now Parliament is looked at as <clears throat> eh, our heroes and things yeah. like that. So it, there's a lot of, of politics in that law, okay. unfortunately. Yeah, and uh, this is to you, Cromwell you know, building on what uh, Yam has just said. You know, reading from the body language of the president, you know, the tone and the explanation, the scientific background he gave as to whether homosexuality is so biological, no. hormonal, <laughs> or whether it is psychological and learned behavior. No, no, sure, no. Do you get the feeling that the president is actually tracking back? There is uh, a school of thought that argues that actually the president is also using the issue of anti-homosexuality to actually play politics. What do you think? Uh, it, uh, when I take the president at his word and mm. his body language, like mm. you said, mm. I think he was not talking to Ugandans. He was addressing those who are offended okay. by, <laughs> by, by that. Uh, he by, talked to Ugandans by signing. Yeah. So, that was one so he was finished. addressing those who are offended by that. The signing. Uh, by that mm. uh, Ascenting. By that he said there's a team of African scientists yeah. who yeah. came together yeah. from 24 countries and then came to a firm conclusion that. Uh, it's not biology. Yes. Mm. Not so, so he was trying to assure the. the other the homosexuals or the, mm. the, the sympathizers that, you know. This is not about condemning you or punishing you for being who you are. Mm. They always say be who you are. Mm. But uh, it, it went on to justify. And I think the president is also scared mm. of the repercussion of this, uh, of this law. Mm. Uh, but of course, as uh, indicated my, by my colleague, uh, mm. I think, was it not a, a, a private member bill. Yeah, it was. Yes, so it is. It did not come from 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 government. government. Mm. It is therefore means it is the bill of the people, mm. because it was presented by a man who represented the people himself. So he could mm. have gathered information from the people, mm. and then it informed his decision to to, to propose a bill. But uh, yeah. if we were to go by majoritarian rule, and we're going to have a situation of majoritarian tyranny, should our laws be determined by the majority's decision, or they should also focus on the fairness and other principles like uh, natural justice. Well, the, ex the president's explanation is comprehensive already now that mm. this is a fair law according to, 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 to him. Mm. And uh, by the way, mm. um, th those who are taking that law to be offensive, uh, I, I, 
as people I am not clearly understanding, mm -hmm. they are trying to insinuate that uh, every tourist coming to Uganda is a homosexual. Mm -hmm. And uh, also insinuating that there are no Americans or Western powers. I mean, they, they are, they, all Western people are not opposed mm. to, to, to homosexuality. This is not something that is peculiar to, to, to Uganda. Mm. The question of homosexuality is being opposed all across the world, although mm. the degree of opposition also differ. Mm. Thank you. Uh, coming to you, Honorable Mukisa. Uh, concerning the issue of homosexuality, one, I would like to thank our President, His Excellency, Kagutam Seven, for having... <laughs> yes, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is the very first time I'm hearing you thank the president. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I, I respect elders. Even the Bible teaches us to respect and honor our kings. If you want to live longer. Like if them. you want to live longer. So I respect his excellence. Okay. Yes. So concerning the homosexual... But, but we didn't get what you were thanking him for. Uh, I'm addressing what I'm thanking him for. Yeah, okay. I'm thanking him for having stood on his foot yeah. and fought against homosexuality. The mere fact that he signed the anti-homosexual bill, meaning he's actually protecting us. Health-wise, homosexuality is a very dangerous what? act. So he has really helped us health-wise. Mm. Then another thing has... But, but if people are born mm. gay or homosexual... No one is born gay, as far as I know. We surely don't have conclusive evidence to that uh, effect that uh, no one is born gay. Ideally, to me, mm. I believe you being a gay or being a, a homosexual, mm. it is a behavior. Mm. But to be fair to everyone... Uh, Honorable Mukisa, mm. if two consenting adults, two mm. consenting males mm. agree in private to mm. have their own way of celebrating sex, mm. what's wrong with that? So I'll bring it in a Bible perspective. I'm a born again Christian. So if I told it those? was okay. no, if I told it was really a very good idea, mm. then in the first place, God wouldn't have destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah if it was really a good act. But, but Uganda is not and a, this act actually a Christian country, it's a secular nation. No, By the constitution, we are a secular country. We have non-believers, we have Muslims, we have uh, Christians. But still, sure, even, if, even if you want to take on, out uh, the, the, Bible, the, the, the even if you, even the Quran, actually, mm. if you want to take the religion out of the question, mm. still Africans, mm. that it, it's culturally wrong, very oh. wrong. Okay. So, us being Africans, or some of us having our beliefs, our religious beliefs, it's against the uh, law. So, uh, ideally, I don't think anyone is born to be again. Okay. In fact, let me just come in there. Mm. It is as nothing, this law has nothing to do with the Christian faith yes. or any religious. Mm. It is a law, and it is, it is taken as a criminal thing. Mm. So, when you had the president talk, he was not talking about sin. But, but he was know. saying mm. homosexuality is criminal and not mm. sin. So mm. he was not talking as a preacher. Mm. Or he was talking as a... Yes, uh, Cromwell, but the law is the law, but uh, there's also bad law, there's also unfair law, there is unreasonable law. For example, you could also pass a law that is unenforceable. And in this case, we are saying that to begin with, this is uh, a bad law because uh, it is... Uh, it is attempting to enter into the private sphere of man. But Moreover, there is no one who is harmed when two men perform their homosexual You action. see, we are living in what we call a democracy. The question is, mm -hmm. are the people of Uganda happy with the law? Mm -hmm. Cromwell, let's agree. Let, let me ask you a question. If the people, if 90% of Ugandans agreed that we pass a law uh, to kill a certain class of of, of, of people, would we agree as a country? Would you agree, you as a Cromwell, such would a law just because the majority have agreed? Would the people of Great Britain agree to the fact that 95% of the population voted against polygamy and yet 5% have been denied polygamy? 
Honor, but yeah, my lover, your Zaro, you're here. Please, I help us and tango this. Yeah, the, <laughs> this the, is a controversial discussion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, please. I, I think that uh, yeah. Uh, we have our colleagues of the Uganda Law Society <laughs> that, uh, that have more resources at their, at their exposure, all right. All right. And, 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 and they have uh, they are they are trying to put those resources to use. Yes, and will guide us as the lawyers on uh, on that matter. Mm -hmm. very soon and then the rest of us can comment there after from the legal perspective all right uh, i see <laughs> now you you are in uganda yes group. you in uganda <laughs> well on traffic traffic rule what what we we keep what oh, left we, we keep, keep left. left yeah and then when you go to Rwanda. london yeah. or you go to rwanda mm. keep right. you say we keep right in rwanda so no for us in uganda we keep left i want to keep left and that's what we know in our mm. country Mm. Yeah, but uh, that, that's logical what is your... for, for traffic order. I mean, it doesn't offend anyone. What is in contestation here is that, uh, number one, this, this law attempts to enter the private lives. That, that those who are pro, that is their argument. Two, there is no one who is harmed. Number three, it is hard to enforce. However, I would like us to... <laughs> law is clear. Mm. Live your private life. Mm -hmm. Don't come and recruit or mm. contaminate uh, or promote. young Mokisa. Promote, recruit young Mokisa mm. into your, what you do in private to make it a, mm. a career. So he seems to say that the law is majorly around uh, three issues. Recruitment, promotion. Mm -hmm. I forget the other bit, but he seems mm -hmm. to say... So. All, all right, uh, Yam angry. seems to be neutral, right. oh, okay. and the two of you seem to be anti the... to be in support of the Anti-Homosexuality Act. I'm going to organize another panel where <laughs> I have a, one who is against the act, and that's when we can have a fair and well-balanced uh, debate. For now, let's move to our very last uh, bit of this segment which is about the context within which the parliament operates. And I'll start with you, Yam. Uh, given your understanding of administration and then um, systems of governance, uh, would you say that the parliament of Uganda is independent and is therefore well positioned to execute its mandate for the people of Uganda? Thank you. Um, I'm not neutral in the matter. I uh, am still, uh, I don't think I have enough information <laughs> to make a, an informed opinion okay. on the matter, but I am informing myself. Okay. Uh, perhaps with the reasonable knowledge, I'll be able to make a, my enough. opinion on it. But mm. I, I was saying that the, the, the Ugandan parliament is not uh, absorbed from a prisoner situation as well, mm. like you know, of the commentators have said before. So when you investigate how the leadership of parliament comes into play, mm -hmm. uh, the tyrant of numbers that you are talking about, mm -hmm. there is uh, NRIM has a majority of members of parliament there, mm -hmm. and then they have their leadership of SEC, and, and, and President Museveni seems to have a domineering influence around the party structure. Mm -hmm. So almost what he wants really goes. Mm -hmm. So as the leadership of parliament, you are careful to balance the interests of your of your boss whom you're supposed to check. Mm -hmm. I think you saw the recent uh, pictures of, uh, of the speaker and deputy speaker oh, yes. and the uh, president at, when uh, apparently they were having a meeting in preparation <laughs> for the state of the nation address. Oh, yes. But when you read the body language yeah. <laughs> of the leaders of these inst two of, institutions of that are supposed to check each yeah. other, yeah. You, you can easily tell the challenge that we have as, as a country. Mm -hmm. So they are also saying, you citizens, please, put up something then we can also you know have the confidence mm. to say mm. uh, what we would want to say but also the citizens are saying you members of parliament you mm. also put up something then we shall rally behind you mm. so it's a, a chicken and mouse uh, situation mm. for the prisoners mm. but uh, the the idea is to to for those of us that believe that situations can be better in mm. the country mm. and should be better it's our duty at a personal level, not necessarily pointing fingers at where you think the biggest uh, obligation should be mm. to continue to raise the consciousness and the awareness of our fellow citizens mm. so that they can have a perception like ours and then 
mm-hmm. would be able to mobilize mm-hmm. what many commentators call the sovereignty mm-hmm. of the people and that is when we can start seeing some real change but parliament mm-hmm. executive the president your mm-hmm. local council leader mm-hmm. Judiciary. You know, judiciary, you know, there is no, mm. it's clear from the different examples that if they this might not be. Uh, institutional capture by. Yeah, 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 by, by the power that be, because we are in the scenario of regime survival and succession. Some mistake it for transition, but it's regime survival mm. and uh, succession. And, succession. and, uh, and uh, by players that have been here for 40 years mm. and counting. Mm-hmm. So this will come all the other forces that are also saying enough is enough mm-hmm. and then we, we, we are able to move on as a country. Thank you very much. I thank you uh, for well. giving us the opportunity to yeah. have conversation. Yeah, Komwe, um, in the budget for the financial year 2023-2024 that the parliament has passed, I'm told it is ready for reading by the, pres- by the Minister of Finance on the 15th mm-hmm. day of this month. The people were very critical of the amounts of money that were allocated specifically to state house. How can we change this situation? And, 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 and I mean, this is not the first time. It, it's it's a, a trend now. The, the, the MP cars, 200 million for each MP. Then uh, you, you have that budget allocated to state house. And I understand the dynamics at play. These are NIM MP, NIM government. Uh, the opposition MPs tried to put up a, a spirited fight, but in vain. But they're also in Munyonyo eating samosas. <laughs> 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 or they yeah, say, they uh, say <laughs> the passing first, comments. The, the, the first thing is about mm. uh, the independence and the sovereignty of, of parliament here mm. in Uganda. Mm. Uh, you can judge for yourself whether it is independent or not. Mm-hmm. We know for sure that uh, previous governments have been blamed for uh, holding uh, parliament as <clears throat> uh, a tool for doing their own things. Mm-hmm. But uh, of recent, we are aware that we have had parliaments which could receive five million shillings mm-hmm. as a bribe to change the law, mm-hmm. to change the term limit. Mm-hmm. We have had experience where uh, parliament was besieged. Mm. by the military, and the law was changed uh, mm. at, uh, at gunpoint, of course. Mm. They entered into the, the, to the, to the chamber. The age and, limit. Yes, mm. the age limit, and mm. then beat up these guys, and the law was amended. Mm. So you can't call that an independent uh, parliament. Mm. Uh, but of course, they can choose to uh, probably be independent or, or surrender their, their sovereignty. Mm. to the power that be as, as indicated. Mm. Uh, the budget that you're going to read should be able to reflect the interest of the people of Uganda. Mm. Uh, taking PDM, for example, and mm. uh, looking at the inequalities, the economic inequalities that we have in our country, mm. regional economic inequality, mm. I wouldn't expect uh, a sober country to allocate the same amount of money to <coughs> every parish. Mm. If poverty level is at six, it's over sixty percent in Karamoja, mm. and then in the somewhere in Kampala it is seven percent. You can't give Karamoja one hundred million the same way you're giving one hundred million to to, to a parish in sure. somewhere. No, mm. you must be able to ensure that you, you balance all this up so that uh, the other community can be able to, to come at the li- high level, mm. uh, to, to, like the rest of the country. There must be equity in, yeah, to emancipate them. Mm. That's a form of affirmative action, yeah. mm. so that they, 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 they can be able to, to come to the other level of the country. If, you, for example, this is your younger sister and uh, your elder brother. I remember when we were young mm. and going to fetch water in the well. My mother gives a, a bigger, <laughs> a bigger jerrycan to a bi- to an elder brother, and a smaller one to to, to you, you are given according to your weight, the taxation right. and the, the benefit. <laughs> right. So this is what we need to consider, and I would really ask Parliament to to re- to to, re- to reassess. I mean, yeah, lady and re- gentlemen, our time is fast spent. I'm going to uh, we are going to go around uh, each one minute. Uh, give you an opportunity, each one of you, to give your parting shot. And we'll start with you, Honorable Mukisa. Your last message to our dearest viewers. Uh, 
First of all, I would like to thank Savek TV for this opportunity to speak to our fellow Ugandans. And the last message I would like to give out to the public, especially to our leaders, let's endeavor to implement what we have spoken, the way we are good at writing them. Then another thing, for us who, for a category of people who are not leaders, instead of percussing our leaders, probably we can guide them and not fight against them. Another thing, if there is any way we can fight corruption through our, through our president, I kindly request you, let's endeavor to implement what you have documented. You spoke about many ways on how you're going to fight against corruption. This time round, let us see the results and let them not stop on videos. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Mukisa, Honorable Cromwell. Yeah, thank you, fellow citizens of Uganda. Uh, Uganda is a beautiful country, and uh, we, it is the only country that we are, and <laughs> Uganda should be our business. Mm -hmm. And therefore, on issues pertaining to the function of parliament and the fight against corruption, it should also be our, our responsibility as citizens. True. We should join with our members of parliament who are committed to fighting corruption and all other well-minded Ugandans to fight this vice, otherwise to drag us back. Let every government official, every citizen commit themselves to building this country. I thank you. Thank you. Honorable Yamu Wabuto. Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear viewers. I think the, my message is twofold, but the first one is to the government, maybe the president, is that uh, we can have these budgets read and talking about the roads that have been constructed and the hospitals and all that. But our biggest challenge as a country is the software of our people. We need to be seen to be serious about national cohesion and unity and a shared goal for the progress of all of us. Uh, otherwise, uh, the situation could get much worse than it is. Secondly, to the citizens of, of, of Uganda, fellow countrymen and women, you are ideally on your own. Many of us keep uh, making noise, government help us, should help us to this, the comments we just made here. But if you take it upon yourself as a personal responsibility to work on the betterment of your livelihood and your well-being, uh, that is a more safer corner to be in than to lazily wait on uh, those that should be aiding uh, come to your rescue. Uh, for God and my country, thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, indeed, for honoring our invitation. To our viewers, I say thank you very much for sticking with us. Uh, from us here at Civic Space TV, we say, nice weekend. Go out there and take good care of yourselves. Don't drink and drive. Until next Saturday, goodbye.